All right, so this order was for nine plus three eggs. So a total of 12. So this was nine, 18 eggs. So he sent six extra. Awesome. Great, actually. Super excited about these eggs. Packaging looks good as well. And we have to note that um, for for shipped eggs, you'd want them to sit with the pointy end down um, for any eggs actually that you're you're looking to hatch. Uh, but especially with the shipped eggs, you want them to sit pointy egg uh, pointy side down uh, for at least twenty four hours before incubating. <laughs> So this one seems like it might have cracked in shipping. Yes, it did. So I'm not going to open this one. Um, you can tell because the newspaper is wet here, in this area here. It's dark and it's it's uh, hard. So let's go ahead and not open that one. Alright, so out of 18 eggs, um, one came cracked, which is awesome because I only ordered 12, so I got 5 extras, um, which I'm always happy to have. Uh, so I'll go ahead and candle these, uh, these eggs off camera, and then I'll show you if I do find any with, uh, with a detached air sac. Alright, so I just finished candling them. Um, some of them do have detached air sacs, so I'll go ahead and show you how that looks. Um, let me turn off the light. That's a bit difficult to see. But if you look right here, this little area right hmm. you see as I move, I'm right in the center. So if you can see, I'm moving, and there's a little air bubble in the center that's moving. Um, that's a detached air cell. This, this, see if you can see this better. The camera's not picking up very well. But you can definitely see in the center here, uh, there's a detached air cell. Uh, so I'm going to let these eggs rest for 24 hours before I begin inc incubating. And then I'll come back and... Uh, show you guys how I plan on incubating these eggs. Hi everyone. 
So, sad news. Uh, the eggs that I was showing you guys in the previous clips, they unfortunately didn't make it. Um, I had six go into lockdown, and for some reason, they just didn't didn't pip, and they didn't hatch. Uh, this was only my second time hatching, so trying to uh, hatch shipped eggs. Uh, so I did a lot better than the previous one. The first time I tried hatching, I only had one go into lockdown, and unfortunately, that guy didn't pip as well. Um, this time, I had six, which was great. Uh, but the next time, if I do try this again, I might want to up my humidity. Um, I only kept it around 45 percent, which was which is what I usually keep it at um, with my normal incubation periods. But this, uh, I'm assuming that I have to up the humidity because these are shipped eggs, and I'll tell you guys. Uh, I'll give you a reason why uh, a little later. So I'll go ahead and turn off the light and then I'll sh show you guys. Um, these are five eggs that I actually kept. Um, I held back. They look wet because I froze them uh, just for the purposes of showing you guys what's wrong with them. All right, so for this egg, if you guys can see that, that line in the center of the egg, uh, so that is what we call a blood ring, and that usually occurs because the chick began developing, but for some reason it just dies, and the blood vessels, uh, they n no, they're no longer attached to the walls of the egg, and they become, uh, they begin decomposing, so that causes that, that blood ring. And then the next egg, if you guys can see, so this looks perfectly normal, but for some reason, uh, this egg just died and stopped developing. Um, so the contents of what was a chick is down here. But as you can also see, the the air sac for a chick that's developing at this stage is huge. It's almost a quarter of the egg, and it should not be like that. So here's what we call a saddle air sac egg, and this is actually very common in uh, shipped eggs. Uh, I haven't had any that that I've uh, personally hatched myself that had saddle air sacs. Um, it's more of just uh, shipped eggs. Um, and as you can see, this chick fully developed. This was one of, one of the eggs that went into lockdown. Um, this chick fully developed, but it just didn't pit. And this one's the same. Uh, this one made it to lockdown. Same thing, saddle air sac, but it just didn't pip. And then this egg is interesting because you can actually see the chick internally pip. So let's see if you can see that, that little pointy end there. That's actually what we call an internal pip. So what happens is that when a chick is fully developed and they uh, begin trying to make an external pip, they pip internally and break the inner membrane of the air sac. And that's when they start breathing, uh, breathing that internal air, which will help them in turn break the outer, sh the harder shell. Um, and that's when you see holes in the outer shell so this guy he made it to an internal pip but he didn't pip externally and usually I would only help chicks if they have pipped externally um, since this was an internal pip I didn't want to I didn't want to uh, drill a hole or anything and help, help it pip um, and the reasoning behind that is that there's 
a ton of veins running in and out of the the shell and I didn't want to break it uh, in I didn't want to do it in case I broke one of those vessels and it'd be harder on the chick. Um, so if he didn't make an external pip, then I wouldn't help him out. Um, if he did, then I would have helped him out. But unfortunately, he only pipped internally um, and he didn't make that external pip. Um, and it's the same thing, saddle, air sac. Uh, and usually that's just because it was a detached air cell. Uh, that's what I think it is. Um, and again, I think my humidity was too low. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying that, that is because these air cells have receded way too far. Uh, way too far down. It's almost half the egg. Like, it's, it's a good two-thirds of the egg. Uh, it's a good third of the egg, actually. And the chick only has uh, two-thirds of the egg. So usually, for my, my eggs that I hatch here... Uh, probably up to the tip of my finger here uh, but as you can see this chick is received the air their air cell has receded way further down than what I usually see in my personal ha my own hatches um, so yeah that that was unfortunate uh, but shipped eggs are like I said before shipped eggs are not always guaranteed uh, and I'm actually proud of myself that they've developed to I got six to fully develop um, that's still a win for me because previously I've only I only had one and six is better than one so the next time each time you do this it's trial and error until you find what works for you so six now um, but next time I think if I do do it again I'm gonna up the humidity from the start um, probably going to give it around 50 six, to like 65 here uh, because I'm in California and it's just so dry here that I, I probably need to do that so that the air cells don't recede so fast. And again, that's the internal pip. Uh... But I did actually, I did hatch um, other chicks that I'd like to show you guys. So we'll cut to that clip. All right, so these two chicks are what I believe are going to be black modeled. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in. They are an oddball for me. I've never hatched any uh, any black chicks which is odd I mean Saramas can throw any type of colors um, and I don't have any black Saramas uh, as you can see in one of my previous videos so these two were really cool I'm excited to see how they turn out uh, I consider keeping black as, as a color uh, project but just didn't get didn't have time to get around getting any nice quality uh, black Saramas so these two guys are actually pretty amazing. Maybe I can just finally start the uh, black project. Um, and then once I get that going, maybe incorporate chocolate into it uh, and blues, which gets into a whole new world of Saramas. Sorry, they're crying a lot. Uh, but yeah, these are the black ones. So these next two are what I believe are going to be Splash. Uh, they That's a new color for me as well. Uh, they are actually a week younger than the two black ones that I just showed. Uh, but it, this is also a really cool color. Um, so I guess along the lines there was black and blue uh, in, in my Saramas. So these guys just hatched uh, today Sunday so they hatched Friday so they're two days old uh, actually they hatched yesterday because I found them yesterday morning so they're two days old um, and they're looking really good like this the splash color is 
pretty amazing. Actually, no, I think they did hatch Friday. I'm wrong. They did hatch Friday. Friday night. Uh, but just gorgeous, gorgeous color. Uh, so I'm really excited once they feather out to see what they actually look like. And then once they grow, uh, once they become adults, I want to see what their final color will be. Uh, but again, I'm super excited about these guys. Blue is new color, black's new color. I'm excited for this year's uh, Stroma Raising. And these are colors that I've hatched before. Um, I have 10 total. Actually, I have more than 10. Sorry about that. I had 10 hatch that are this age. These two, these guys are two weeks old. Um, and then I have eight that hatched on Friday. So they're, they're actually two weeks older. But as you can see, you can tell the quality, just breeding quality birds give you quality chicks. So if you just looking at this chick, uh, I'm amazed at its posture. Uh, it's just going to develop into an even better looking bird. And I'm super, I can't see you guys how excited I am. Uh, yeah, they're crying like crazy, but just look at that posture. Like, gorgeous, gorgeous posture, and it's only going to improve as the bird grows. Uh, so with that being said, I'll go ahead and end the video now, since they're all crying. Um, I guess it's bedtime for them. Uh, I disturbed the peace. But uh, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.